looking at the seven heavenly virtues as YouTubers. Let's look at it. There's seven specific YouTubers who perfectly represent the seven heavenly virtues, and we're going to start off with the virtue of charity. Charity is described as a willingness or even desire to help others and better the world, no matter the cost to one's personal self. We all knew Mr. Beast would be the perfect candidate for this virtue, but what exactly has he done to secure this position? Mr. Beast revolutionized YouTube content by seamlessly blending entertainment with acts of generosity. One of the most pivotal moments of his career was in 2017, when he donated $10,000 to a homeless person setting the tone for more philanthropic content. It's about $10,000. I'm not joking. The immense popularity of Mr. Beast giveaway videos not only skyrocketed his success, but also unintentionally inspired a wave of new creators aiming to emulate his approach. I was gonna say Jack Sepp. Jack Sepp's guy do be doing charity, but his is not nearly on the level as Mr. Beast. His whole philanthropy channel is nothing but giving. And then he also gives away in the main, she uses the main channel money to give away. Like, he lives a very subtle life just to give away bread. Even if he has certain people doing challenges, he didn't have to give away bread. And not as much as he's given away, you know? So... Key distinction sets Mr. Beast apart from many of these imitators, his genuine passion for giving. Unlike many channels where giveaways are primarily content driven, Mr. Beast integrates philanthropy with entertainment, prioritizing helping others over just creating viral content. As Mr. Beast's channel grew, so did the scales of his donations. He began organizing larger and more ambitious charity events, significantly impacting both his audience and the causes he supported. Among his notable charities were the Team Trees campaign in 2019, with a goal to raise $20 million for planting. I donated to that chat, the team trees. I donated to that shit. It was actually dope. 20 million trees and the team seeds campaign in 2021 aiming to raise 30 million dollars for ocean cleanup these campaigns drew global attention and participation beyond these large-scale charities mr beast has also been involved in numerous other charitable acts including building wells in africa to provide clean water organizing food drives and giving away millions of dollars in free clothes mr beast has touched the hearts of many as he always prioritizes helping others and bettering the world always at the cost of his own time money and resources and so perfectly situates him in in the virtue of charity. In a similar vein, the next YouTuber on this list has also generously donated thousands of dollars to charity. <laughs> However, this YouTuber is most renowned for being a humble and down-to-earth person, which places him in the virtue of humility. Humility is described as being modest in self, free of pride or arrogance. The virtue is a sense of inner knowledge that one doesn't need to prove their greatness to the outside world to actually be great. No other YouTuber perfectly represents this as well as Penguin Zero or Moist Critical, as he never allows his pride to interfere and always stays stays true to himself. He's not shy about sharing embarrassing stories, showing that he doesn't worry about appearing perfect. This was clearly demonstrated during the intense feud between Penguin Zero and Sneeko, who's known for his controversial views and sometimes extreme reactions. Earlier this year, their beefs reached new heights when Sneeko began attacking Charlie and his girlfriend without provocation. Where he starts making a, like a statement <laughs> on monogamy. Which of course had nothing to do with the video I made. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say names, someone text me, he's in a monogamous relationship. This is his girl. his provocative content and tweets, Charlie kept his response calm and logical, avoiding the kind of emotional outbursts Sneeko showed. When Sneeko tweeted something that seemed like a challenge to a physical fight, Charlie didn't react with anger or accepted the challenge. I ain't gonna lie. Sneeko a bitch for that alpha show. Charlie cooked that nigga. Charlie cooked that nigga, bruh. Cooked that nigga. Why you attack? Right. Bro. It's like... The only reason he pulled up Charlie's girlfriend is to try to get a rise out of his chat. Like, look, look at, look at who you, look at who you date, look at who you sleep. Like, you're corny, bro. And you want to know what's crazy? Karma is insane. Cause this nigga ex girlfriend, she's now dating, I believe, like one of a really uh, a high status millionaire or even close to a billionaire. 
That nigga is sick. And right when she came out public that they was dating, nigga said, oh, uh, nigga was on the internet talking about some name, name five beautiful uh black women. Nigga, didn't you date one? But she found a new nigga that got more bread and then cucked up like you, bruh. And now he's on he he on the internet bashing black women like you wasn't dating them. You're hurt. You're hurt. It's okay, Booski. It's okay. Take that L. Hold that. <coughs> Hold that. Instead, he chose to reply in a way that made light of the situation, showing he preferred talking things out over resorting to the quote, caveman reaction to beat someone up. Yet during the peak of all the drama, when things escalated to new heights of animosity, Critical would showcase a video of Sneeko dancing on stream while threatening to shoot Charlie with a gun for no valid reason. So he kept saying, oh you're in Tampa right? I'll come see you, waving his gun around and dancing. You wanna watch my clips? Watch my clips. Watch my clips. You want to? Oh, you want me to watch your clips? Watch my clips. <laughs> These are the only clips I'm watching. You were? That nigga is so, bro. That was some of the corniest shit I ever. You want to watch my clips? Watch my clips. You threatening? Like, I need you to understand. Like, you beefing with a nigga over the internet. First of all, you threatening a nigga over the internet. Like, you not pee, dude. You not pee. You not P. You not keeping it player. Like, be the internet nigga you is, bruh. You not like that, bro. Additionally, Charlie would hilariously correct Sneeko's gun terminology <laughs> while passively showing he was heavily armed. This is like the grammar police of guns, but he's a fucking imbecile. You absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. Hey, that's one of the top vids on the channel. One of the top vids on the channel, bruh. I think it's like the second highest viewed video on the channel. Hey, man. They're mags, not clips, you absolute f***ing dummy. The same way that this is also a mag. They're all mags. Stop saying... Like, and what's, what's crazy is... Nigga was flashing a pistol like... Like, not... Er bro. We, everybody can get... They're so easily accessible. You flashing a gun on the internet like it's like, yeah, nigga, I like you want to go gun for gun like that's that's what you that gets you off. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Clips, you look fucking stupid here. Charlie would then go on to point out how Sneeko would always resort to challenging someone to a fight rather than using the mental capacity to come up with any insults. When you are getting your feelings hurt and your immediate response isn't to fire back with insults, jokes, whatever, it's to challenge someone to a fight, you've taken a huge L. You've shown that the person has got under your skin and the only thing you can resort to is a caveman brain of, I'll beat you in a fight. Charlie never let his pride or the desire to maintain a tough online persona dictate his actions. Instead, he chose a path that was less about proving himself and more about maintaining his principles and character. Charlie oh obviously <clears throat> does not care- This nigga basically said, you on the internet acting like a buffoon? But just understand, I got guns too, brother. You just stupid enough to flash yours. Type shit. Like, I got guns too. What, all right, what are we talking about? What What now? That's it. It's as simple as that. Care about looking the best in front of the crowd and always make sure to call himself out for his wrongdoings. Yet despite Charlie fitting perfectly within the virtue of humility, the next virtue, diligence, doesn't really fit with Penguin Zero as his videos are often characterized by extremely low effort. And that's where one of the most prominent investigative channels on YouTube, CoffeeZilla, comes in. Diligence okay. is described as being steadfast in your work no matter what stands <coughs> in your way and if there's work to be done. I do, I want, I've been wanting to like sometimes check out CoffeeZilla shit but his shit be hours long. I remember looking at that Logan Paul shit. I remember, I think that shit was like two or three hours, bro. I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not watching a whole two, three hour bit, bro. I, like, I can watch one, I can come back to it, but I'm not reacting to one. Jesus. It's four hours? Bro, I'm not reacting to a full four hour bit, bro. I will die. That'll be the entire stream. I was like, yeah, nah, you got that, bro. 
You'll do your best to get it finished and properly. This is often attributed to someone who has decisive work ethic, steadfast in belief, and the capability of not giving up. Coffeezilla is a perfect candidate for this virtue as his ability to provide incredibly well-researched videos shines through the majority of content on YouTube. Coffeezilla always goes the extra mile in his videos by providing solid evidence and facts and always puts maximum effort to create the best research videos exposing scams. For example, during his three-part investigation involving CryptoZoo, one of the most infamous crypto scams run by Logan Paul, CoffeeZilla single-handedly explained every illegitimate claim about the CryptoZoo project. In the video, Coffee interviewed a group of significant investors in the uh, project like and what he discovered was shocking. These investors had sunk tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars into CryptoZoo, expecting it to operate as Logan had advertised, but instead, the game turned out to be completely unplayable, with Logan Paul apparently abandoning the project, leaving the investors with a useless crypto coin and ultimately losing tens of thousands of dollars. CoffeeZilla's commitment to exposing these scammers through meticulous research extends beyond just the CryptoZoo case. Another prime example occurred on February 6, 2023, when he released an in-depth video aimed at exposing Dylan Dennis, an MMA fighter who recently rose to online stardom after his boxing match against Logan Paul and his feud with Logan Paul's wife, Nina Agdahl. The video- Bro, I, I'm gonna be honest, until this nigga Logan Paul said he was gonna fight him and he started posting Logan's wife, I never heard of the nigga, bro. Like, I'm not even a fight watcher, but like, my thing is, like, if you good in the fighting space, you know what I'm saying? Like, Dylan Dennis. I never heard of him until he, he, until he went to fight. And then the nigga did all of that to uh proceed. Like, he proceeds to get his fucking ass beat. You did all that yapping and trying to expose to look like a fucking buffoon. Look like a buffoon in the fucking ring. You began with the introduction of another YouTube investigator, Zach XBT, who uncovered several tweets of Dylan promoting apparent scam cryptocurrencies that eventually rug pulled. Setting out a mission to reveal Dylan Dennis' careless promotion of scam coins, CoffeeZilla came up with a genius strategy to create a cryptocurrency from scratch, get Dylan Dennis to promote it, and ultimately expose how Dylan Dennis promotes scams without doing his prior research. The operation involved CoffeeZilla creating a complete replica of the CryptoZoo scam by simply changing its name, description, and fund Fundamentals. Number one, we created soursnft.com, which is a our actual fake landing page for the NFT project. It's got all these cute candy land uh, <coughs> fake NFTs that don't exist. Now, the idea is this is what he's initially going to promote. And then I also created our little uh, switcheroo website, which is just a website with all his uh, previous transgressions. Then after oh, negotiating damn. with Dylan, Coffee paid $5,000 in order for Dylan to promote his scheme on his Twitter page, which is actually pay Dylan to post a link to our fake NFT project. But the twist would be as soon as he posts that link, it will become a website dedicated to every scam tweet Dylan Damn. Danis has ever done. And remember that this website would be linked by Dylan Danis himself to all of his fans, directly showing them proof that he'd scammed them multiple times. Damn. Dylan Dennis, without thoroughly reading the contract or researching the cryptocurrency, agreed to post a link to the scam coin. The Check this out. Our moon bound. Okay. Irony in the situation came when Dylan Dennis, who had earlier criticized Logan Paul for his involvement in the CryptoZoo scam, unknowingly promoted a direct clone of it created by CoffeeZilla. Before the promotion, he- Damn, Logan Paul's a scumbag for everybody, for everyone- Feel bad for everyone he scammed. <coughs> Scammer gets scammed. Tweeted, <laughs> Damn. Logan Paul is a scumbag. Feel bad for everyone he scammed. When Dylan tweeted the link, he soon realized he'd been a part of a sting operation designed to expose him, leading him to promptly delete the tweet. Coffee perfectly showed his unmatched diligence by going the extra mile during his investigation. He always had evidence to back up his claims, yeah. research deeply into the topic, while uncovering the dirty pasts of the managers behind the CryptoZoo scheme. Chastity, also known as purity, most commonly refers to the quality of refraining from sexual activity that's considered immoral or any sexual activity altogether. It also means complete fidelity to a husband or wife during marriage, or to have a partner that would always find a way to support you. The couple that perfectly exemplifies this is Ludwig and Cutie Cinderella. In May of 20 Now wait. Wait. 2020, Ludwig announced his relationship on Twitter, confirming that he and Cutie Cinderella were dating, and in a video uploaded to YouTube, Ludwig explained how they met online for the first time. Here's how it started. Cutie was like, hey, I'm gonna be in town to design- Now, <clears throat> I know you don't know their sex life, 
and they're probably in a good relationship. But I highly, highly doubt neither one of them has had sex before getting together. Highly doubt it. Highly. Yo, I honestly would actually put money on it. I would put money on it because I doubt that. I a wedding. It was like a friend's wedding, I think she said she was going to be at. And it was over summer. And she was going to like do the cake for it, I think. That's what she told me. It turns out that was a huge fucking lie. <laughs> Where in reality, she came through in props to her just so we could meet for the first time. Because at this point, we've been talking for like a couple months. Pretty much like every day after stream, we would talk, we'd shoot the shit. And then came the magical moment. Oh my God, I have to leave. This is so Where we cringe. went on the Ferris wheel at Santa Monica Pier. And we had our own pod and her friends had their own pod. And as we go up and we hit the peak with the entire view of the ocean on one side and the view of Los Angeles on the other, I kissed her for the first time. <laughs> no, you didn't. Why are you like this? Why are you lying? Ever since then, both streamers have been rooting and supporting each other in their careers to this very day. Okay, yeah, they're probably a great couple. I won't take that from them. But you said purity and refraining from sexual stuff. That's a lie. You're lying because they, I bro, 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 bro. Focusing on shared professional interests in their public interactions, QT Cinderella and Ludwig's collaboration in setting up events, such as the chess boxing events and streamer awards, is a significant part of their relationship. Their partnership not only strengthens their bond, but also positively impacts the broader streaming community. Based on the amount of information out there, it's safe to say that QT Cinderella and Ludwig's relationship has been an important factor in the growth of both their fan bases, which now sits at over 10 million followers combined. However, Ludwig? actually a popular uh he was a popular twitch streamer i think he at first uh the nigga who was number one in subs was was ninja and then uh who was number one in subs was ludwig after a subathon and then kai currently holds the the throne for having the most subs at <laughs> currently um but not right now, but like at that time, like that's the highest peak. But he was popular on Twitch. I think he signed to YouTube. I think he's still currently on YouTube. And he does like he kind of does content like uh like Charlie now. Ch Ludwig created the subathon. Oh, did he really? I didn't. I didn't know too much about him. I just found out about Ludwig the first time he signed to YouTube. I never heard of him, but since before then. I didn't even know that. When I first heard of him was his shit, like his tweet about signing to YouTube was getting pushed and it ended up on my Twitter timeline. That's where I heard of him. But hey, you know, didn't know that. That's kind of cool though. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. However, unlike QT Cinderella and Ludwig, who have gained millions of followers through streaming and gaming, the next YouTuber on this list, as the candidate for Temperance, has instead managed to eat his way to 16 million followers. Temperance, often characterized as emotional restraint or self-discipline, is a skill of moderating desires, emotions, and attitudes. A striking example of this virtue is Matt Stoney, a competitive eater or mukbang YouTuber. Mukbang, a genre showcasing excessive food consumption, typically- I think- <coughs> I think I've heard of him. I'm not 100% sure though. He aligns with the deadly sin of gluttony, marked by overindulgence in food, drink, alcohol, and drugs. Most mukbang content involves an individual eating an enormous quantity of food at once. Within this sphere, creators like Matt Stoney navigate a unique path. Despite consuming vast amounts of food for his videos, Matt Stoney maintains a healthy lifestyle through rigorous exercise and strict dietary control, a stark contrast to Nikocado Avocado. Okay, I could have went my whole life without seeing this little clip right here. Like, uh, you could have just posted a picture of him type shit. Like, now, now, like, there's an image of that, bruh. Another mukbanger known for excessive eating without self-restraint, leading to countless health issues. Chat. Was that... hair? Was that hair? of eating without self-restraint, leading to countless health issues. That nigga got a random hair. He don't got hair nowhere else. 
<clears throat> but right above his ass, it looked like a dookie stain. Oh my God. Stoney's approach to health and weight management, even when ingesting thousands of calories in a single session, showcases a remarkable self-control. In interviews, Stoney revealed that on non-filming days, he restricts his calorie intake to about 2,000, focusing on nutrient-rich foods. His background in nutrition studies further explains his sustained fitness, Damn. but on the other hand, Nikocado Avocado shows a complete lack of awareness or concern for calorie consumption, having progressively increased his portion sizes over time. Stoney's discipline is showcased in his commitment to a balanced diet outside of challenge videos, making sure he remains in a calorie deficit. His ability to consume up to 10,000 calories in- That is insane. He's- that's actually a- that's a- that's- Hey, you know what I'm saying? If you can do it, but like, hell no, nah, bruh. Minutes, and then lose all the calories in just a few days after is completely different when compared to Nick Okado's detrimental lifestyle choices. Matt Stoney's dietary regimen and dedication to sustain his physique is impressive to say the least. However, Lemino still takes patience to an even higher level. Patience involves steadfastly working towards goals, enduring trials, and calmly awaiting results without frustration or anger. Lemino is a prime example of this virtue. Renowned for his high quality and deeply researched YouTube documentaries, he's taken the quality over quantity approach to new heights. Despite the long process involved in producing each video, Lemino consistently delivers top-notch content with unwavering production standards. He dedicates countless hours to video editing, music composition, and writing detailed scripts, often exceeding 10,000 words. Damn. The editing quality is on par with top-tier Netflix productions, the research is thorough, and the topics are engaging. And the most impressive thing about it, Lemino manages all aspects of these high-quality productions single-handedly. His patience Damn. and perseverance, whether a project takes several months or even years, shows his exceptional ability to persist and strive towards his creative goals, demonstrating patience through over a decade. My brain would have been fried, bruh of continuous effort is a significant achievement, and let me know is a prime example. However, this same duration of commitment is mirrored by another individual. They best represent the virtue of kindness. Kindness is the act of being helpful to others without expecting anything in return, not for personal gain, but purely for the benefit of the person being helped. Among YouTubers, Markiplier stands out as a pair. Huh. Okay, I wasn't expect. I wasn't expecting that one to be the one that uh, Markiplier is under, but let's see gone of this virtue. For 11 years, Markiplier has not only built a reputation as one of the most sincere and approachable creators on the platform, but has also become synonymous with genuine kindness. He's consistently maintained a positive demeanor throughout his decade-long journey, always expressing heartfelt gratitude towards his fans. Unlike many others, Markiplier doesn't rely on a fabricated internet persona for popularity. He remains grounded and true to himself. This authenticity is further highlighted in his numerous discussion videos where he openly addresses serious topics by providing providing support and awareness. Markiplier's kindness is not just limited to the online world, his kindness also extends beyond his YouTube presence. When interacting with fans in person, his approach is notably different from that of many celebrities and fellow YouTubers who often try to rush fan interactions or even avoid them altogether. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I like... I don't, I don't feel like I try to rush him or like avoid him. But, like, at the same time, sometimes I feel like it gets awkward for me. So, like, that's why, I, like, I don't even know. I still don't know what to say or what to do when somebody approaches me because they know a video. I don't know. I just be like, yo, like, what's up, bro? I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm not, this is like, it's not used to it. Other celebrities and YouTubers lack the interest and respect seen in Markiplier's encounters with fans. Damn, okay. Huh. That'd be good. 